Want to take a sketch from your sketchbook and transfer it into your art journal? There's a way. Come on along and I'll show you how I did it. Hi everybody. Two apologies before I start. One for my voice because I have a bad cold. Thank you to my son who kindly passed it along to me. And two, for the length of this video, I started out with an idea. One thing led to another and another and another, and this video got a little long. It took me several hours in the studio, but I've condensed it down as much as I can. So the idea was to take this sketch that I love, that I drew in my sketchbook but I wanted to use it in an art journal spread so I thought wonder if I couldn't just transfer it to the jelly plate and then onto a print that I could use in my art journal so that is my goal and I scanned it in and then increased the darkness so I had a lot of dark ink and then printed it out, just regular inkjet print on regular um, printer paper. And I added some images, copyright free images from Pixabay, just to give the print a little more interest. So at this point, I don't know what's going to happen, if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to give it a try here. So I just laid it face down, nothing on my gel press plate just naked plate and I just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and at some point I realized I'm transferring black ink but I have my gel plate sitting on my black glass mat so I can't really see if it's transferring or not so at some point I did get a little wiser and put a piece of white cardstock underneath my plate so that I could see what I had going on on the plate and I'm looking for my bone folder because I'm thinking I need a little more pressure and I didn't want to use anything sharp obviously on my gel press plate but I started with the kind of the side the edge and then decided to flip it over and put it more perpendicular to the plate so that I had more of a surface that I could press down on and it's a just a dull edge it's a rounded edge on the bone folder so I knew it wouldn't scratch my plate yeah still can't see if there's anything there so it's a learning process right at some point you get that epiphany of oh yeah I can't see it because black on black doesn't really help so I thought all right something if it transferred it's there so I just went ahead and pulled it off So I thought well, it might be cool if I put some alcohol ink on the plate and just moved it around and got some color that I could transfer along with the image. And this was a total experimentation here. Um, I didn't have real good luck. I think if I had an air compressor or an airbrush to where I could get more of a fade, and I also realized way toward the end that I probably wasn't using enough alcohol. It seemed like the inks dried really fast on the gel plate. But I'm just using my uh, little puffer ball there. It's a Polaroid lens cleaning tool for cleaning off your camera lens. And on Yupo paper, this works really good, but it, like I said, it was drying really pretty fast. It didn't want to move as well on the gel plate as it does on Yupo paper. 
But I played with it and went back and forth and back and forth. And I eventually got something that I thought, all right, I'll just live with this because I wanted to move on. <laughs> but I just kind of poofed it and moved it until it was dry and then added more ink and more alcohol and just played back and forth and kind of danced with it. I thought I had sped this section up, but it doesn't appear that I did. So I started with stream and then put watermelon for the ink colors. And finally got that piece of cardstock to put underneath it. And you can see I did get the drawing transferred to the gel plate. It remains to be seen how well it picks up, but so there I'm adding the watermelon. And I thought I added enough alcohol, but I think when working on the gel plate, I'm going to have to just add more alcohol, put the alcohol down first, and then put the ink on top of the alcohol. And I think it'll move better. I really do want an airbrush, but I really don't want to spend the money on one. It's like when I get the gel plate out, that's when I wish I had an airbrush. But other than working with that, I don't think I would use it for anything else. I just want it just to move air. I don't want to paint with it. But so that kept getting really dark, a really deep purple there, and I didn't like that. And there now I've sped it up. So I just kind of played with it and went back and forth and back and forth, like I said. And then I grabbed a Q-tip at some point because I thought this has got to... I didn't like the really dark edges I was getting. It was really pooling at the edges. And there I just put some alcohol on a Q-tip, got the little splashes of ink off. And then I thought, well, maybe I can soften the edge here, which that worked. And then I thought, all right, well, I'm going to get rid of some of these dark edges. So then I just played around with the Q-tip a little bit, just kind of softening and mixing and experimenting as per usual. And, yeah, that really wasn't enough alcohol to really cause it to spread anymore. A little bit, but not very much really wanted to get rid of some of those dark areas. The idea in my head anyway was I had those flowers at the bottom and I wanted some color like behind the flowers when I pulled the print but yeah that didn't really happen because the ink was just too dark. So it's all a process and learning and Next time if I try this again, I will use lighter. I wouldn't use the stream. I would use lighter colors of ink and lots more alcohol just to thin it out or dilute it first before I put it down. But it's kind of looking like a flower, so I decided, all right, I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of lightness. So I went for, I think it's Peach Bellini. It's just kind of a light peachy color, peachy yellow. Because the flowers really are over on that side more, so I thought, well, I'll add some lighter ink that will maybe show up behind those flowers. I'm really sorry, you guys. This seems kind of boring watching it back. I spent a long time just chopping it up and taking pieces out and sp spreading parts of it up, but didn't really, like, watch it, watch it. So feel free to scrub through to a more interesting point. But at this point, I'm just getting the alcohol on the gel plate. Just kind of showing you my process, I guess, is why I didn't cut all of this out. 
it is sped up, so hopefully it's not too boring for you. I'm, I'm, I really hope you get something out of this. There's a lot of parts to it. Um, and obviously, if you wanted to skip the whole alcoholing thing, you could. If you're just interested in transferring your drawings from your sketchbook or paper to your art journal, then you don't have to do the alcohol ink part and you can just skip ahead. But I thought it would be fun to try. <coughs> Excuse me. So at, at this point I had pretty much given up and I thought, all right, I want to pull this and see what I get. So I'm just using some Liquitex Basics in Bleach Titanium, I believe it is. And I do know that I want to prime my brayer so that as the rubber brayer goes across the alcohol ink, I'm not lifting the ink off the plate. So I want to start out with the brayer that is fully primed with paint. And then just getting a layer of paint on there. I did watch a few of Sally Lynn McDowell's, McDonald, McDonald's videos where she did some transfers on the gel, pl gel plate. And I don't know, hers all came out really good. So the one tip she did give was make sure that you can see your transfer through your pickup paint. So I'm just kind of going over it and trying to get things spread out really smoothly. And then I'll take some of the paint off, roll it off onto a scrap paper to my right there. Now I had the bright idea of using um, deli paper, but and I, it had been a while, you should stick the center of it down on the plate while you're holding the left and right edges up and then slowly let each of the sides fall down onto the plate and you won't get those wrinkles, but I got quite a few wrinkles that I tried to smooth out, but you end up with those voids in the paint, in this case in the alcohol ink. But, I was surprised and excited to see that my girls did transfer just fine. And you can see, you know, why you want really dark inkjet prints because you're not going to get, you get the detail. There's a lot of detail. You can see the detail in those flowers, all the little petals and everything. But it comes out a lighter gray color. You're not going to get the intense black that you have on your um, inkjet print so but I thought okay so there's some alcohol ink left on here I'm just going to try and do a ghost print and see if there's anything of the girls left on there and I wanted to get it cleaned off anyway so I'm just doing another pickup print and you can kind of see their faces nothing that I would actually use but it's good um, piece to just use as a first pass background that I can pick up on again. So I'm going to go again with this second. Oh, and here was my big faux pas. I thought, gee, I will put the jelly plate on top and then I can see. But as you can see, I dropped it down crooked and then peeled it back off. And unbeknownst to me, just that quick, some of the inkjet ink transferred onto the plate. And I thought I had flipped the plate over to where that side would be down. But anyways, I went back to the original position and put the print down. But you'll see when I pull it off that I actually kind of got a double impression of just all those little curly cues and nothing of the faces. So... Again, it's a it's you know something that I can use to print over top of, which I think I do later on. 
but you can see as I'm pulling it off, it's like, oh, are the faces? It's like, oh, I got it print on the top, and then I took it off and turned it over, and then I got a print on the bottom. So obviously I didn't flip it to where the ink was against the glass mat. So I decided this time I'm getting my hair dryer out, and I'm going to try and move the alcohol ink with the hair dryer instead of the lens cleaner. And figured that's wild plum. I figured, all right, I already have the inkjet transfer on here. I'm just going to play with it and see what I can do with the alcohol ink in the hair dryer. So that's where I am here. So I've used a wild plum, lettuce, and honeycomb for the ink colors. Oh, my camera never focuses on you know like the supplies when I hold them up so you can see the names of them it's an iPad camera so I don't know maybe I have to tap it every time I'm not going to do that I'll just tell you what it is when when the voiceover is done I'll go back through and add captions so and you'll know what I'm using so it does seem like it's moving better but it's just not fading out like I want it to. So again, I go back to, I think I didn't use enough alcohol or I should have added more or I don't know. I just need to play with them more because it does seem like I'm adding a lot of alcohol. And I went back and it's like, all right, I'm going to puff this out. Now I have a, a cling stamp that I got from In Love Arts. And... I put that into the wet alcohol and it lifted the alcohol. So I think that will be a cool look when I pull the print. And this is just a mop up paper that I used, I think for a watercolor. So it has a little bit of color on it already. And that's pretty. It just doesn't have any faces on it. And you can see a few little features, but I will definitely be using this for collage paper. So, okay, let's try this again. Are you bored yet? <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It was a long process, but I was determined to get something that I really liked and wanted to use for my art journal. So, like I said, speed it up to wherever you want, but I wanted to include it for those of you who really want to stick around and watch the whole process so it seems like the hair dryer worked to get it spread out initially and then I kind of fine-tuned it with the lens cleaning bulb and I like this one better I mean it's not fabulous but at least the color is not real intense and not too dark it is faded out some and i gave it a spritz with some alcohol you can see the little dots there so i thought okay if this lifts and it sh i will also use it for to to stamp on to the plate but then i thought no i think i'd rather have a script stamp on the plate so i am pulling out my uh, stampers anonymous script stamp with some jet black archival ink and I'm just going to stamp that on little bits here and there and see how much of that actually gets transferred because I thought you know to have the gel plate out I'm just going to go for it and try everything and see what I get so that's what I did I've been missing you guys. I've been doing a lot of work in my new flower bed. I added a flower bed to the front of the house and it was a real mess out there from when the gas company replaced my meter and they pulled a bunch of my landscaping bushes out. And so I decided it was going to be a perennial bed instead of bushes. So I've been spending a lot of time doing that and not so much time in the studio. So I used a little bit pinker acrylic paint here 
I just thought that color would be better as a background for this print. And it, it did come out pretty cool. I really liked this one the best. I figured I can work with this. The only thing that I don't like is how shiny the alcohol ink is. So when I go to put it into my art journal, I want to make sure to cover it with some matte medium and that will knock the shine back. But you can see the print turned out pretty good, you know, when it where the inkjet pulled up. Not in love with the alcohol ink, but it's okay. So that's the one I decided to use. So I just prepped my journal pages with a coat of clear gesso. So once the gesso was dried, when I thought, okay, I'm going to bring in my girls and I think I'm going to use a stencil with some crackle paste. And I had colored the background with sap green fluid acrylic paint. Waited for that to dry. And now I am just using the DecoArt crackle paste through this script stencil from the Crafters Workshop. Just want to get some texture. And I like the way that looks. I'm going to add a little bit more to the bottom. And then I just turned it over and just cleaned off some of the crackle paste onto little bits and pieces of the other pages in the corners of the page. Again, it's all about the texture. And it's so thin where I cleaned it off that I probably won't get many crackles, but the texture will be there. So now I'm using Quinacridone Magenta Liquitex Basics Acrylic and I watered it down quite a bit, putting the color on and then with a damp baby wipe, I'm just kind of wiping it back. What I want is more of a stain. The crackle paste was dry. So I'm just getting like the little pops of pink in the background and then little bits of the pink onto the crackle paste. And just adds a little more um, contrast so that script shows up better. And I love the combination of the magenta and the green. And I think it's just really pretty. So then I put some drops of the sap green fluid acrylic there at the top and I'm just going to spray it with water and let it drip and run and that will kind of collect in the crackle paste as well a little more water or a lot more water And then just softened it with the baby wipe a little bit here and there. Picked up some of the puddles and dried it off. Now the um, chipped sapphire distress paint by Tim Holtz almost exactly matched that purple alcohol ink on my print. So I thought that would be a good thing to spread around a little bit to just kind of tie in that color from the print to the journal pages. 
So I just put some on my mat, sprayed it with a bunch of water and got it real watery. And I'm just going to apply it with my brayer. I like the texture again that this gives. It's just kind of random, um, translucent, just kind of ethereal looking, I guess you would say. I just really like it. And it was a quick, easy way to incorporate that color onto the journal pages. I'm just trying to get some more of it down into that crackle paste. And cleaned it off my mat and gave that a dry. So I brought my gel print back in and deciding where I want to put that on the page. And I did want to keep that little edge there that's going across the spine groove gutter. So I just closed the page and made a crease there so that I'm sure that I'll get it down in there okay. And I thought that I need more of a transition of color around the edges so I just added both the magenta and the Tim Holtz and a little bit of the sap green all the colors I used in the background and just kind of scumbled them on the edges of my print and dried those off so that there's not so much of a demarcation line it'll help them blend into the background more so then I thought, okay, now I'm going to add some white splatter. So I just watered down white acrylic paint, splattered that all over, and dried those off really well. And I had said before I didn't like how shiny the alcohol ink stayed. So I put a coat of matte medium on the front of my print and then laid it down on the page with some more matte medium. Got that little overhang into the crease really well and just dried that off. So you can see I kind of embellished the one girl with some paint and brought her eyes out more and gave her some hair and I'm just kind of softening the hair with a little bit of white Posca pan right there. And I did pull some pieces off the edges of my print. And you can see I just sat them on the opposite side to the left there, thinking I might use them at some point. So I got these cute little postcard kind of envelopes. They're printed on both sides. They're actual little envelopes. I got those from In Love Arts. And I thought, gee, one of those would be cute on the opposite side of the page so I just played with that and those pieces that I tore off the print and decided to just collage those there all the links for the in love art products that I'm using in this project are in the description box below I got these cute dies um, different leaves and like little floral patterns from them and I decided I wanted to use those so I'm going to put the journal aside and get out my sidekick and I'm going to use some of the prints that I that didn't make it into the journal that we didn't like as much to cut out some pieces using those dies I just splattered that little envelope with some of that green color just to coordinate it in a little better. So knowing that I was going to glue this little envelope down, I didn't want to waste the cute printed part that's on the back. So I tore the flaps off um, of the sides and the bottom 
and just decided to open it up. And then I can use those pieces for something else. And I just put everything down with matte medium. I think those little pieces just help tie both sides together a little bit better. The pieces that I tore off the gel print. So I have my sidekick out and my little dies from In Love Arts. And I'm going to use those cast off gel prints, pieces of those, those there to um, cut these out and then I can put them in my journal and they will coordinate that one there that I'm putting the pieces on is the one that I used the floral stamp from in love arts to lift the alcohol ink those tiny little pieces are kind of a pain to poke out but it wasn't too bad so you can see the couple pieces that I got from the first paper and now I'm just going to do some different ones out of that second piece and I also think the pieces that are left the waste pieces of the paper that are left will be usable in some way too later on down the line you can see that up above the And then the other thing that I cut with dies from In Love Arts are those cute little lacy corner pieces. So that set came with three different ones. So I just used all three just to see what they look like. And I really like those. I think I'll use those a lot. So I decided to put some of those on there. And I'm just gluing those down with um, my Crafter's Pick the Ultimate Glue. And toward the bottom of the gel print with the girls, you can see the other two pieces that I cut and put on there. So I think it was just a really great finishing touch to this journal spread to use those on here. I really like it. And then the last thing I decided to do is just go around some of the pieces with my Stabilo all pencil just to add a little contrast and interest and shadowing so I will be doing that here in a second and we can finally wrap this up I know it was long if you stuck with me this long I really appreciate it or even if you scrubbed through to this point um, I'm glad you were here and that you watched if you haven't subscribed to my channel my videos are tutorial and process um, art videos so they do tend to run a little bit long usually between 15 and 20 minutes but this was an exceptionally long one but if you like what you see if i'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit my notification bell so that you know when i upload videos the next time those of you who are tried and true I really appreciate you being here all the time I really really do I wouldn't have much of a channel if there wasn't anybody to watch and a lot of you come back over and over and I really feel like I've gotten to know you and it just makes having a YouTube channel a lot more fun so thank you so we're just getting all the little cutouts die cuts glued down here and we'll finish this up I really really love how those coordinate with this page see there's always a use for something even like I was really disappointed with a couple of those gel prints that I made but look what cute little embellishments little just little pieces of those papers ended up giving me that go with this page just trying to decide where to put that last one so just one more reason not to ever throw anything away 
just keep it all because you'll use it at some point you'll use it I don't know if you could hear that thunder just rattle my window another big storm today so these are the pieces I wanted to show you that I got from in love arts they sent me this set of 12 of those little postcard envelope things those of you who do junk journals and do like a lot of little pockets and things these would be fabulous they're really nice quality um, just really cute I like them I'm sure I'll use every one of them and like I said everything is linked down below with the links to these products and also a discount coupon or discount code rather that you can use to get some money off which we all appreciate and then I got those two sets of dies that are sitting there that you watched me cut and the stamp that I used earlier on the gel plate and then I also got these cool little um, page corners or they'd be cute on a journal cover I think that's probably what I'll use those for another day and there I go I'm just going to finish this off by adding a little bit of Stabilo pencil around some of the embellishment pieces just to add a little shadow and contrast I'm really glad I'm getting to the end finally with this voiceover because my voice is about over it's about ready to give out I just activated the Stabilo with a little bit of water it just makes such a big difference on like the little pieces like that it just gives a lot more depth to the piece so again thanks for being with me I appreciate you being here and in the meantime go make some art bye